What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. My name is Isaiah Rivera. I have a 50.5 inch vertical world record. This is Austin Burke, and he has an alleged 47 inch we vertical. We have no idea anymore. 47 inch vertical off one, and then an, another alleged 44 or 45 inch vertical off well, two feet. I, I do have an official 46 off one. Official 46. Official. But I've seen him jump higher. <laughs> that's, that's like, I just don't know anymore. Um, but and yeah, we both. 43.5 up to. There we go. Those are the official numbers. <laughs> Alleged. Um, so, yeah, we both jump pretty high, and today we are going to reveal the secret of jumping this high. But before we learn about the secret, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsors over at thpstrength.com. They are the premier vertical jump coaching on the planet. That's pretty good. They've trained multiple elite athletes to get even better and even more average athletes to become elite. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in jumping higher and getting rid of knee pain and really any injury that's out there, uh, they're pretty good at it, go to thpstrength.com to sign up. You know, you know what we should do? What? We should give them a discount. How's a 10 You know what? 20% off to the first 10 athletes who sign up with the code podcast. Right now, go to thpstrength.com and the first... 20%. Yeah, percent. That's crazy. crazy. First 10 athletes who sign up using the code podcast will get 20% off their first month. So if you're weary, now is the time to try it. But do it fast because there's a lot of viewers. All right, cool. Code podcast. Let's do it. Podcast. Remember, only the first 10 people. Only first 10. So act now. I hope they don't kill us. You know, us pause now. this video, go to thpstrength.com and sign up now. Dude, I hope they, the sponsors don't drop us for this. This is crazy. Yeah, they might. They might. Whew. We might get fired. No, I hope not. <laughs> All right, well, without further ado, let's uh, officially introduce a topic, and it is going to be the truth about jumping higher. Mm -hmm. And the truth about jumping higher is that as you get better at it, as you start jumping higher and higher and higher and become more advanced, it becomes way easier to detrain. Absolutely. If you don't know what detraining means, it means that you basically lose the adaptations that you've gained. That the specific adaptations we're talking about in this case is vertical jump height. It's the entire reason we train, right? It's to jump higher. If you keep the same training load, let's say you have a 24 inch vertical and then you train all the way up, let's say you're doing three sets of five back squat and you get all the way to where you have a 30 inch vertical doing that three sets of five. If you keep doing those three sets of five, you're not going to always have a 30-inch vertical. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where you reach that peak, and then you're going to slowly decrease and decrease and decrease. So the sad reality, the truth about jumping high is that the training needs to get harder just to even maintain your vertical. And then if you want to keep jumping higher and higher, you need to keep training harder and harder and harder. And what is the downside of that? is it can become very mentally challenging, very mentally taxing to sustain that. So having said all that, now that you know kind of the science behind why that happens, uh, I guess we'll start with you, Austin. What are some challenges that you've had in sustaining that level of, of performance? Um, obviously, we've all gone through ups and downs in training. Mm -hmm. why, why do those happen for you? And I guess what are the obstacles that you face in, get, in getting there? I think understanding um, the detraining that you just explained. Uh, 2022 was my best year ever of dunking. Uh, I trained very hard leading up to it in 2021. And then 2022, I was jumping my highest. But I was so afraid to overtrain and jump bad, like, you know, every session that I just maintained the full year. And then when I got injured... Well, what, I, do you mean by, what do you mean by maintaining? Like, what exactly were you doing? I was jumping once a week. I was, you know, barely doing anything in the weight room, maybe pushing 50, 60% on squats, nothing too crazy, slow, slow strength. Um, I, my weight room sessions were not hard at all. Um, and that worked at maintaining throughout the full year. But when I injured my meniscus in December, I, when I finally came back, doing what I was doing to maintain didn't work, and it was extremely frustrating. I couldn't even jump relatively close to what I was jumping the year before. Um, in the past year, I spent trying to replicate everything I did in 2022, which obviously did not work because I was just in a state of constant, what is it like? Yeah. De depletion. <laughs> I would, no, I was always, no, not even depletion, not depletion. I was always detrained. Um, yeah. So you're doing, it's a very common mistake that guys make is you jumped your highest in 2022. Yeah. And you attributed that 
to the training that you <laughs> yes. were doing in 2022. <laughs> but you. effects of training are delayed. So when you're doing a training cycle, that training cycle isn't going to cause the vertical jump gains you see later that week or that month. The reason you see uh, adaptations and, ju- and the results of training is from the training that you were doing two, three, six months before. And then you actualize those gains with later training cycles. So Austin was jumping his highest, attributing that to the training he was currently doing, which is a very common error. And then when he tried to replicate it this last year, I mean, you couldn't get to that level, right? And we, we had a lot of conversations where you were depressed. I was you, so You depressed. thought you were washed up. I thought I was done. <laughs> and it wasn't until we started really increasing the intensity of my training is when I started hitting those 45, 46 inch numbers again off yeah. one foot. And it's the, the hardest you've ever trained, right? 100%. Like right now? 100%. Yeah. And that's, yeah, it, it basically lines up with what the research shows. And it's that the training has to continue getting harder. But the downside to that is there's a lot of psychological, ne- negative psychological effects with that if you have the wrong mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for me, I had to make a shift from being very goal-oriented to being very process-oriented because the training is freaking hard. Like, even today, we're going to do this podcast, we're doing our ices right now, and then we're going to have to go and destroy ourselves in the weight room like we've been doing in the last month. Yeah. Um, two hour sessions <laughs> and, and the, the horrible part is that we're going to do that just to jump low on Friday <laughs> right? because we're fatigued um, mm-hmm. so it's ridiculous amounts of training for marginal results in the short term sometimes worse results in the short term and it's really just investing like we're investing into the future which for us since we're periodizing training is to jump high in the summertime so right now we're busting our asses in the weight room so that we can have a glorious summer <laughs> of, of jumping high, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the truth about jumping high is that it is very mentally taxing. It's not glorious. A lot of times 100%. we see the highlights on, on Instagram, uh, but the highlights are really just 5 to 10% of the actual sessions. Most of the sessions are very fatigued. You're jumping really low. You're going mm-hmm. into the weight room sessions not feeling like working out. Um, so is there anything that has, like, helped you? I, I, have, I have things that, I, that mm. I've done, but is there anything that has helped you to stay consistent, you know, to not get demotivated? I, I definitely think switching from goal-oriented to process-oriented has helped. Uh, just because in 2022, my goal, I was just, my goal was to jump to my highest every week, hit new dunks, and post content on Instagram. Uh, whereas now, I'm just, I, I'm happy if I get one session, I'm just focused on getting better every single day. Um, dunk, d- jump training and dunk training, once you hit that elite level, is a full-time job. you got to watch every little thing, what, eventually what you eat, how you're sleeping. Um, so I kind of just, yeah, it's just about being process-oriented rather than making sure I jump every week for my ego, yeah. um, which is hard because, so, you know, everyone thinks I'm washed up every other week. <laughs> but it's cool. Something that has helped me stay process-oriented, because it's easier said than done, right? Like, stay focused on the process and don't mm-hmm. care about the goals. A mental switch that allowed me to do that is I made the work the goal. So I didn't make the goal the goal. So right now, my my ultimate goal at the very moment is 51 inch vertical. It's always to jump higher. But that sets the path. And then what I do is I make a mental switch, a mental flip, and I make the work the goal. The work in our case is showing up and doing the workout that is written on my app, on my, on my training app. And I'm happy if I just show up and do the workout, right? Mm-hmm. And hit the numbers that, that are supposed to be hit. When it's dunk session day, I don't make the goal to, you know, hit a new dunk or hit a certain vertical. No, I just make dunking the goal, like the actual jumps. Make sure I'm jumping max effort. That's it. And that I don't over jump. Those are essentially my, my two goals. So go in there, jump as hard as I can. The result of it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I'm dunking, if I stick my elbow in the rim or not, whatever. I just make sure the goal is max effort and that I don't over jump and I'm not jumping through pain. As long as those three things get done and as long as I made the goal, the goal of showing up and training every day, eventually you will jump higher and reach that ulterior goal. But yeah. make the work the goal and you will stay consistent. You will stay disciplined, um, especially if you do it consistently enough to where a habit is built. Um, that's one thing that has helped me a lot. Another one's meditation. Mm-hmm. Meditation has helped a ton, which by the way, 
Uh, for the guys that are currently on THP, and if you're not on THP, this might be an incentive for you to get on there. I actually have a mental training guide of everything I did, how I meditate, what books I read that allowed me to have a good mindset of being process oriented and how to build good habits, how to stay disciplined, how to deal with bad jumping days, how to deal with injuries, all those things. Um, I have an exact process for each of those things, but meditation, huge, huge, huge role and building those that mental fortitude for it yeah i definitely think like you can see a shift in my training just from 2023 to now going from goal to process because last year i essentially wasted a whole year of me you know <laughs> trying just to have one good session <laughs> like it was ridiculous um the other thing too is that helped is definitely being around isaiah him moving back and then switching that mindset I just kind of copy everything he does. He is literally the best in the world. And I just, whatever, you know, with the training sessions or his mindset on certain things, I just try to emulate that to the best of my ability. It saves a lot of effort because I can just look, be like, all right, what is the best doing who lives four minutes from me that I spend most of my time with? And let's copy that. And it's really everything he says. Yeah. And that's huge. Like being part of a community is huge mm -hmm. because like one of us might get demotivated, but me or Austin or John, we're going to hold each other accountable to, mm -hmm. to showing up and, and getting the workout in. Um, and yet another THP <laughs> plug is you get a community when you sign up for THP. And then you also get access to me, um, like literally direct access to me where you can talk to me about, about this type of thing. Um, but yeah, community's freaking huge. Because uh, at the end of the day, like we're social creatures, humans are social creatures and Socrates. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of the motivation for anything is because of how you're perceived by people. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, it is very ego driven to think that way, but so, people can lie as much as they want. Everybody's driven uh, by having affirmation from their peers, from family, from friends, and that type of thing. And if you surround yourself with people that are in that community, like it's gonna motivate you. It's going to keep you motivated in training. So if you're not in the dunk community, I urge you to do it. You know, post on Instagram, DM people that are around the same skill level because that's the most motivating thing you can do, especially early on. Yeah. I always found – I found CJ and Steven early on, uh, Nico, Nico, uh, Nico Christie, guys that were, like, yeah. around the same level as me. Um, got into a group chat. You know, we would send each other our training, what dunks I'm trying to hit. When I would lower him, I would send him, send him my dunks. Um, I was really competitive too. Like I was always trying to like catch CJ um, in terms of what dunks we could hit. Uh, you have people to compare weight room numbers with. So putting yourself in a community is going to be huge as far as keeping yourself motivated. And it's just fun. It's a lot more forgiving now than it was when we started because it was so uh, clicky. I feel like in uh, 20, 2018. Yeah. Like we were, everyone was just like, if you weren't in the core group, it was hard to infiltrate. And then, but now it's, everything's very open. Everyone... And it's so much Ooh. bigger, too, now mm -hmm. than it used to be. Like, I, I, I used to know everybody in the dunk community. Like, now, like, I don't, I don't know most, pe most dunkers yeah. out there. Um, I'll find, like, this, like, just random freaks that can jump high. And I'm like, wow, how did I not know this person? Um, but I think that's a pretty good overview. I mean, the uh, only other thing would be injuries. Ooh. Like, just new injuries popping up as we train more and more. Because we were just talking about this. That's another truth. <laughs> Oh, the, the truth behind jumping high is injuries are going to pop up. Mm. That is a, an inevi inevitability of, <laughs> of jumping high. It's like I, I always like to give the example. It's like a high-performance car, like a Formula One race car or a car that, that you tune to go faster. When you push the limits of human performance, issues will pop up. You're going to push all – the tissues in your body, your ligaments, your tendons, your bones, your muscles, you're going to push them to their limits. And when you push anything to their limits, things will break, things will give. Um, so I think one is accept the fact that injuries are going to happen. One of John's mentors has this saying that I love, injuries don't go away, they just move around, right? So <laughs> when, I, when I got my, the original problem I had was tendinopathy, knee tendinopathy, when I took care of that issue and got super healthy, that's what started happening. I started producing way higher peak forces, and then, boom, my muscles started uh, freaking tearing. So then I had to address that in the weight room. And then, then I got so strong in the weight room that I started having back issues. So then I had to address that issue. And then 
then I was super healthy, started jumping off vert a lot and going opposite plant and all this stuff. And then PFP popped up and then took care of that issue. And then an ankle issue might happen because then now you're starting to bring in more speed into a jump and your, your ankles aren't used to all that, all that force going through them. So then you take care of that. And then it, the cycle just goes on and on and on and on. And it's not going to stop. Mm -hmm. A new injury is always going to pop up. So how do you handle that? Because injuries get you depressed so how like what what do you do one first the understanding that it's going to happen don't get mad at it mm -hmm. it's just something just, adapt yeah just notice it notice it ha notice it appearing and don't react emotionally to it and don't then it. educate yourself so alex ramosi says this a lot he says anytime you're you're de you're depressed is because you feel like you have a lack of options mm. all right if you're anxious is you get overwhelmed by all the options um Depression comes from not having a path, not knowing what to do next. And the way you overcome that is by educating yourself, all right? So educate yourself about the injury from a reputable source. Cough, cough, THP, by the way. We know, we know about every jump-related 20% off first month podcast, code <laughs> podcast. But educate yourself. Educate yourself about the injury. Follow the research. Don't follow the random Instagram page um that says that they can they can help you out uh follow the research about the specific injury that you're dealing with and then start taking steps towards uh getting better with that injury and what's really cool like with mental health is if you're making progress doesn't matter how messed up you are like you're going to be feeling good yeah like take an acl tear let's say you were to go through an acl tear you know it's going to be really depressing initially but as soon as you start going through the rehab process and you see results it's like your baseline happiness will already be increased compared to like if you're completely healthy and you have a bad session, you're depressed. That depression from that is going to be a lower level of sadness than when you're in the middle of rehab and you see progress. Yeah, like you're going to yeah, be yeah. happier because it's just it's all relative. Like it's all relative to what you like your previous day was at. Um, so just understand there's going to be fluctuations in your emotions and stuff like that. And then just inform yourself and always be making steps towards recovering in the injury. Um, and always ask yourself, is what I'm doing today going to make me feel better or worse tomorrow in terms of pain? That's good. Answer that question correctly, and you'll be I think a, the right I think a good thing, too, is getting rid of the timeline. Whatever. Unless you have an event, get rid of that internal. Preach. Yeah, timeline. Like You don't need to be healthy by June 1st for absolutely no reason. You don't want to give yourself three months for a knee injury. Just. That season that you're in the middle in, in high school, guess what? You're going to be, in five years, you're not going to care. Yeah, literally. Just do it. Just do the pro go through the process, and you, it'll be a lot quicker than if you keep evading it. Yeah, so. if you have an injury and you have a tournament in two weekends, just skip the tournament. It's mm -hmm. not going to matter. I remember there was games where I was thought I felt like I had to be ready for in Michael high school. Jordan flu game type of thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, like, I had, like, knee pain, and I was like, I got to play in this game. It doesn't freaking matter. It's, I'm not. Like, right now, I'm trying to have test my vertical and all that stuff. And it, it's, like, funny how important I used to think certain – or, like, dunk events, certain dunk mm -hmm. events, how important I thought they were. And I could have just skipped them, ended up healthier, made more progress a lot more quickly. So 100%. get rid of the timeline. Doesn't matter. I don't care how important you think whatever you have is about to be. It's not important in the grand scheme of it all. So that is actually amazing advice from – from Austin, just get rid of those time lanes. Is that John? John's here. Wow. All right. It's a good that idea doing the podcast. Yeah, I think that was good. All right, cool. Uh, that's pretty much it, everybody. What is that? The sponsors are back. What are they saying? They're saying sign up at thpstrength.com and for 20% off your first month, use the code podcast. It's only for 10 people, so if you made it this far, there's a chance there's still spots. Yeah, but not for long. <laughs> nope. And then... Uh, <laughs> If you are on YouTube, like the video. And if you're on a podcast platform, please give us five stars. It'll push it out to more people. Um, and it'll incentivize us to keep making this. Because when we, when we get views on these, it's very motivating to keep, yeah, <laughs> keep doing it. So, um, And then, like always, leave a comment. We'll get back to it uh, as soon as we can. And I'll catch you guys in the next podcast episode. Yep. Peace out.